What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time since I recorded the last video, but as you guys know, this is not my main focus. I got a lot of other stuff to do, streaming, music producing, etc, etc, etc. One thing that also changed is that I now joined Svenson Song's Griffon Recordings label as a new a and I'm really happy to be part of it. Some of you who may follow me for a long time already know that it's a really important label for me. I've been there since the beginning and so now being part of it it's it's really a big thing for me and I'm really happy for Sven to giving me this opportunity to learn a lot of how labor works also from the inside seeing all the stuff that's going around and also to check out new music it's, it's really cool I'm really really buzzing and I'm looking forward to the future and to check out some amazing demos maybe also your demo I don't know just let me know if you got some new music ready send it over to the demo email I will link you down below in the description box and yeah I think that's enough talking for now let's hop into Ableton and let's check out the stuff that I prepare for you so the topic that I want to talk about today is uh, how I do my side chain channel routing and how I set it up it's pretty easy what you can obviously do is save all the stuff that you need and this is a tip for the future as well save all your channels all things that help to accelerate your production save it into you know, your user library so i got set it up on the presets and it's my sidechain kick channel and as you can see boom it's there pretty easy super simple um what i've done here is that I basically just took a kick loop, it, uh, a random kick loop from a random sample pack. You can also have a clap. It doesn't matter. You just have to have some sort of signal that mimics kind of a kick, um, and you can loop it throughout your whole track. So if you if we can do it now from the beginning, we just go. I don't know. It's just search out for a kick loop. We just take a random kick loop like this perfect four to the floor beat and then you can click here go to loop if this is enabled you can just drag it and you know scroll it throughout your whole track so that basically this sidechain signal will uh, be in every part of the track that you need the next thing that you want to do is select instead of master as an output just a send only and if this is correct, you can see by playing it that the channel will be displayed in blue. So the audio signal, you, you can't hear it. It won't go anywhere. You won't affect the master, any chain. It will be uh, just a sand only signal that others, you know, plugins, VST plugins uh, can grab it up and use it for their own side chain. We can fire up then a side chain compressor. We're going to audio. Compressor, 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 compressor. It's just the basic standard um, plugin sidechain uh, compressor from Ableton. You select sidechain, and as the input, you select your first channel, this one, and you can go and rename this channel as well. I do it obviously to keep a clear vision on my arrangement to sidechain kick or whatever you like i don't know then you can maybe do and recolor it i think so i do this every time to you know see that this is my sidechain channel and this is not uh music at all i paint it white it's just a personal stuff that i do you can do it however you like and what we can go on from here is then using this carrier signal as a signal to affect our compressor which will be then affecting our loop or music or whatever you got uh, loaded up here. So obviously this is a really hard example. But I think you can get the idea now. And the cool thing is that it doesn't matter how many uh, how many things that you fire up, for example, as long as you select the sidechain channel, this carrier signal will affect the compressor or whatever plugin that you have connected to it. And so you don't have to, you know, 
select every time the kick and stuff and doing it all manually. You just set up one channel that you can then go on and save into your library into your library by doing like this. Just click and drag into a preset, sidechain kick, and boom, it's done. You have it here. And every time you need, every time you start a project or you think you need some sidechain, boom. It's done. You have it there. It just won't click and everything is set up. Another thing that you can do is uh, if, let's say, your material that you're using is already, you know, compressed enough. If you then select, you know, to sidechain it again. The compressor, obviously, every time that the kick hits in, will compress your material even more and maybe you're not okay with it or maybe you say okay i the material is already compressed so much that i don't want to compress it anymore i just want to you know duck the volume so that basically the material doesn't get compressed anymore you have more dynamics and what you can do is fire up an utility for example and then go over to max for live and then search for envelope follower. It's a max audio effect. Drag and drop it to your sidechain kick. Uh, and as you can see, this envelope follower is basically just following every signal then that goes into it. So you can maybe if your carrier signal is uh, really low, say like that, just for example, you can just crank up the gain. Okay, and uh, this carrier signal will basically, we can map it then to our gain output. As you can see now, it's going from 0 to 100%. So what we need to do is just go to 50% as a start point so that the utility starts at you know, 0 dB and then go all the way down to 0%. By doing so, uh, your material, you, you, <laughs> by doing so, your audio track won't be compressed like a co normal compressor would do, and just bring it up back again. It it will just duck the volume, so you have a uh, better control over your uh, dynamics, and in the final stage, maybe it doesn't get squashed so much but if your audio track isn't that compressed already you can go with the um, sidechain compressor that's no problem with it um let's do another example a third thing that you can do which is really handy uh if you would say i don't know i'm doing a sidechain kick stuff and i don't want to you know compress the whole signal but i want to compress just a certain freq frequency band what you can do is fire up an eq and then let's say, I don't know, uh, I have this, this bass, which is going on at 100 hertz, and the kick is around 80 hertz, I don't know. So then you can go to 80 hertz, the specific frequency band that you know your kick is sitting in, and map this to the gain knob of uh, this frequency. By doing so, it's the same way that you're docking the volume of the whole signal just that now you're docking only this specific frequency band so it goes some like this okay I, I think that's a bad example let's let's use a bass um i don't know audio track for it um So this is with um, the side channel. on. Obviously, you can, with the Q curve, you can select how wide or how narrow your dip will be. And now you can hear pretty clearly. That's a, a big, you know, uh, side chain dip there. Or you can do it really narrow. And it's barely hearable, but it will be enough to give um, your kick space to cut through the mix. Um, what you can do, obviously, is if you don't like it to be so harsh, you can just play around with the percentage here so that um, the 
volume duct won't go down as you can see it here till all the end but maybe i don't know let's say 25 percent okay just to give an example and then as you can see the dip will be much less but obviously it will always be in this curve if you reduce the gain the dip will won't be that much what you can do then is play around with the fall this will prolong um, the fall or the rise which will delay the rise and it will have another effect but for side chaining and kick the best thing to do is you know mimic the kick that you have so you can also you know use the kick that you have and plug it up there um, the delay knob will basically shift the signal for the percentage of milliseconds that you um, are using here you can also go with you know, one sixteenth of a note and so it's synced but I, I don't see a real purpose for our specific use now yeah I think I think that's enough for now yeah all right guys thank you very much for sticking around till the end I know it's been a really short video but in my opinion there's not much more to say I wanted to keep it very general so that you can I don't implement these tricks in your productions if you like if you have any further questions about stuff more in depth just let me know and I'll cover that in another video I think for now that's it thank you very much uh, as I already said and see you in the next video hopefully bye bye stay tuned guys